it's playoff time in the PWHL. It's the most exciting time of the year for any league, especially this league in its brand new season, first time ever playoffs. We're going to discuss that a little bit, and we have a special interview with a player who is indeed taking part in the playoffs. This is the Puck Drop Podcast. It's time for the PWHL Puck Drop Podcast. So it is May, it is playoff time, and I'm here at the satellite office for game day hockey right here in downtown Toronto. I thought I'd come out in the office so you can see a little bit of the city activity behind me and uh, to enjoy that. Hopefully there won't be a lot of noise. Uh, there might be a dog barking, <laughs> but I will try to keep that to a minimum, make sure you can hear me. So I'm just having a great time. I am going to attend the first two playoff games uh, between Toronto and the opponent that they selected, which is, of course, Minnesota. We found that out in a uh, Twitter post with Natalie Spooner and her son, Rory, revealing that Toronto had done the research and selected Minnesota. And that series will start May the 8th. And then that means we will have Boston versus Montreal in a fierce series, I'm sure. Now, if you are in Toronto and don't yet have tickets to the uh, first two games, please make sure to check out my Twitter and Instagram because I am giving away several tickets to game one and game two. So watch in the next day or two and be sure to follow and comment there and you could win the giveaway for tickets. I just want to give back. I uh, am going to attend the game. There are more seats, so more people can attend at Coca-Cola Coliseum, which is, of course, a larger arena than Madame. And I'd love to share with you all, maybe say hello at the game. So find those links below. Just check out my Twitter, uh, Game Day Hockey. It's probably here on the screen while I'm talking. Um, so there was a press conference to, uh, like a conference call, to announce the choice of playoff opponent for Toronto. And we saw the uh, team coaches and captains all speak about their upcoming series. That was really interesting. And I'll have a breakdown of everything that they said in a separate video because there was a lot to cover. So be sure to watch for that. That'll be more or less a bonus episode. And so once again, just please be sure to subscribe and share. And as I mentioned before, I'm not seeking sponsorship for this podcast and for my channel. I'm trying to do this in just an independent manner. And so you're my supporters. You are the backers. If you're on YouTube, you can hit the super thanks. On Spotify, you can subscribe and have a monthly donation. That would really help. And, uh, you know, I'm giving away tickets. So that's an investment that I'm making. And I just appreciate that that you all are watching and I've gotten to speak to some people at the games. It's been exciting and it's going to continue to be exciting. So I'd really appreciate that. That'll keep the content coming and uh, just thank you. So on to the series, here's what it looks like. We've got the first game on May 8th, Wednesday, uh, Minnesota at Toronto. And then the following day will be game one of Boston versus Montreal. And they will alternate May 10th and May 11th and then one day off before the game threes will resume when they uh, switch locations. And of course, these are best of five series, so they could go three, four, or five games, and then we will move on to the championship series. And one of the big stories, of course, just to, at the end of the season is the game that Ottawa played in Toronto and failed to clinch a spot as they lost that game in the final game of the season. And that uh, allowed Minnesota to qualify for the playoffs, even though they've been on a losing streak the last five games and seem to have declined a little bit in their play since the World Championships. Boston, on the other hand, has surged during that time. And we saw Hillary Knight really stepping it up after her great performance in Utica. So Boston is trending upwards. And their last game against Montreal, where they qualified for the playoffs, was a battle. Uh, it was tied up late, and we're going to talk to someone who played in that game and was definitely involved in that whole uh, last-minute tie and then last-minute uh, victory for PWHL Boston as they were able to clinch a spot. And that's going to be coming up right after this. I've already revealed who it is. It's Mariah Keppel. 
defender for PWHL Montreal and I had a great conversation with her actually the day after that game. So we were able to talk about that game and just playoffs in general coming up as well as a couple other, you know, interesting tidbits. If you don't know much about her, you definitely want to watch that. I uh, just want to mention quickly the three stars of the week were announced. We had Ella Shelton. Unfortunately, New York is out of the playoff scenario, but in the two games, she had two goals and four assists for six points. What a season for her. She's definitely in the running for best defender. And Natalie Spooner, who had, of course, the 20 goals as her final tally in her two games played. She had four goals, two of them game, both of them, I guess, game winning goals. And then Hillary Knight, as we said, really stepping it up. Uh, she had a goal and an assist in that final game for PWHL Boston. So that's just really boosted their team. And, you know, Hillary Knight against Marie Philippe Poulin, there's so many storylines that we'll get to in that other video. So uh, with the series starting against Boston, as I mentioned, we interviewed PWHL Montreal's defender, Mariah Keppel, and that's coming up right here. So we're so happy to be joined today by a PWHL Montreal defenseman, Mariah Keppel. Welcome to the podcast, Mariah. How are you today? Thank you. I'm doing well. Um, very tired from yesterday, but doing well. Good. Yeah, it's it's been a long, long season. I guess we can actually start there with um, uh, the game that finished out where uh, it was a really close game against Boston with, with playoff implications for them. And uh, your team did not quit as a group, even after going down 3 nothing, And that was a, a really, really exciting game. And uh, we thought we saw the first PWHL Mariah Keppel goal, and that was just so exciting, but uh, uh, turned out it was uh, deflected. What can you tell us just about the game and maybe the moment of that goal? Um, I think the game was obviously a very fast and physical one. Um, I mean, Boston, they had their lives on the line that night. So they came out with a, a ton of urgency and it truly showed. Um, but I think our team, you know, just came together and was like, you know, we're down. But I think it, it also goes to show like how our team kind of functions, you know, coming back um, in the third like that. But in regards to the goal, um, there was a lot going on in that <laughs> span of like 20 seconds um, with one of um, Tabin, like one of the defense getting blown up um, right yeah. on the board, coming back. Um, and then I go out there, get a pass from Boo and kind of see that wide side where I just had gotten like the puck from open and Bucky just tipped it. So it just went into the net perfectly. Um, so, and it was great. And I think that was definitely a goal that our team needed. So. Yes, yes, for sure. And um, I mean, I'm sure you thought you had scored for a brief period or weren't sure. I mean, were, were any thoughts racing through your mind about that or were you just happy it went in? I was just happy it went in. I mean, we needed that goal for, you know, so that we could get that third one. Um, yeah. But I think it was just a crucial goal. So it was amazing. Yeah, well, it was great. And congratulations. You know, it was a great play. And of course, uh, your captain scored the tying goal at the time. Uh, do you want to just say a couple words? I mean, Everybody has talked about her by now, but, you know, um, maybe just specifically a moment like that when you have her on the ice, uh, you know, what's that like? Um, everything. Like, <laughs> I think she is just so calm out there, which definitely helps the people on the ice with her, but also on the bench, in the stands, you know, like everyone, like when Pooh gets the puck, you definitely want to watch to see what she's going to do. Um, and it's just, it's amazing. I have learned so much from her this year. It's incredible. Interesting. I know she is a great leader and just, you know, leads by example, but any little tidbits, especially that come to mind? Um, not, no not nothing, well, anything like particular, but just like little things um, on the ice or really things that like, I didn't like touch on in college, like hockey wise. Um, definitely she's you know just come up to me in practice or you know or saying like even like a like good job in the sense of like okay so i know 
that that is something that we want to see. Um, but then, yeah, just like the leadership of who is amazing. Like you just mm -hmm. want to strive to, you know, do what she does. So it really, you, you can tell, you can tell when she's in the room for sure with our team. So your team had already clinched second place going into the playoffs. And now there's a little bit of a break before the games actually get going. And it's an important time usually to kind of reset uh, and do some playoff preparation. Is there any, you know, specific details that, that the coach and the team focus on moving into this, this brand new part of the, the season? Yeah, I think our main focus is really just playing our game and showing up as Team Montreal um, and doing what we do best. Um, I think, you know, we hit definitely a little slump in the season and we're all peaking at the perfect time. Um, so I really think that's it is just really focusing on us. Right. And we know that uh, typically in postseason and uh, from your days in NCAA, you know, um, elimination type games, special teams play and, and those those moments that, uh, you know, get amplified, I suppose, um, in the playoffs. Uh, is there any special work on that? I don't want you to share any, you know, coaching details, but just habits and things like that. Is that mostly what's being stressed by Coach Chevry as you as you practice for these big games? Yeah, of course. Habits are always the number one thing, um, you know, because the smallest of detail matters. A stick lift matters because that can be a goal. Um, so I think, yeah, focusing on, you know, all the little habits is always the most important thing. And that's what we've been doing. Right. And just since we did mention your NCAA career, uh, that gives us a good chance to segue a little bit just into uh, your graduation from Princeton, where you were a super successful uh, defender and then graduated. And the timing for you was almost ideal, I suppose, as the PWHL got started. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, when you became aware that this was going to be a possibility for you to play in the PWHL after graduation and before the start of your, your next phase of, of life? Yeah, so I played technically five years at Princeton. Um, during COVID, a lot of us took a gap year and didn't go to school or play. Um, so because of that, I definitely hit the time of the PWHL and the perfect opportunity. Um, and I'm so grateful for that because I know, you know, how many female hockey players did so much to get here. Um, and it's really, really incredible. Um, after graduation, I really wasn't sure what I was going to do, whether that was um, to play or not. You know, it's just everything just gets put really up in the air. Um, I definitely wanted to, but didn't know if that was the right opportunity for me. And once the PWHL was um, announced, I was like, I'm, you know, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to try and, you know, try to get invited to a camp and things like that. So it is all working out um, and went to Montreal and I absolutely love it here. Yeah, that's that's exciting. Um, I know you weren't drafted, but you signed as a free agent and uh, we did have super agent Eleni Demestahas on the show and she is a just a bundle of energy and she's a great ally for you to have I'm sure in that whole process. Yeah she is amazing she helped me out so much and I'm a big texter I'm a big I need to know what's going on at all times so it, I was so grateful she could take all my messages every single day during you know that time of free agency after the draft. Yeah so uh was Montreal the the main team that that you had your focus on and had focus on you just a, a good match there yeah during free agency I definitely think Montreal became the team that you know I was focused on coming to good good and uh has the season been all that you hoped for it's been brand new for everybody from start to finish I think you know, expectations were high and, and the games were more exciting and more physical and, and things just kept building. I don't know if there's even been any disappointments, but for yourself, 
And for the team, has it been everything that you hoped for? Yeah, I think it's been everything we and personally I have hoped for and more. Um, I know a lot of people were saying, like, when we even first got there for training camp, it was incredible how professional it was, how many resources we had, like, right off right. the bat. It is so new, so you have no idea what you're walking into. Um, and the first day when all the coaches and staff lined up and were introducing themselves, I was, like, just taken back. Like, wow, like, they put this together so fast. And not only did a lot of, you know, females hockey players come before this and to create this, but there's so many staff members that dropped what they were doing, you know, to come and participate in this league as well. So it's, it's incredible. I couldn't ask for anything more, honestly, in, in the first year of professional hockey. Yeah. I think that's been echoed by, by players, especially who have, you know, worked and waited behind the scenes and, and worked in less than ideal conditions, probably, yeah. you know, we've heard the stories of having to pay for ice time and many things like that. So, you know, the, the CBA being in place and having all those resources, I'm sure is, is exciting just to think like, I, I get to make a living at this and do this. Um, yeah. well, let me, let me go ahead and ask you uh, about, uh, your D partner, and I think this is just one of the, the best uh, situations and storylines just kind of that maybe not everybody is aware of that Amanda Boulier, who we call Boo, uh, mm -hmm. was traded to Montreal at the trade deadline, which, you know, there are only a few deals, but that was certainly a big one. Uh, Montreal needed help on the blue line with uh, Dominique Laskova being out for most mm -hmm. of the season. So you two with uh, your agent in common, but not knowing each other apparently are now D partners. What can you tell us about that, that combo? Yeah, it's, I absolutely love Boo. Um, she fit into our team in about two seconds. Um, she's so funny. She always is cracking jokes, um, which on the bench is great because I always, of course we're in a game, but I like to have fun, you know, everyone, you know, likes to keep it, you know, really lighthearted, you know, and she just does just that. So it's incredible. And yeah, we had, we didn't know each other personally before uh, she, she got here, but we do have the same agent. So yeah. it, it's, it's been really fun. Yeah. And what is it like? <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know if you're the tallest player on the team, but definitely next to her, <laughs> you are. Uh, is there any, like, it, just any special interest in that visually for you or anything at all not that you know being a uh, height challenged is a bad thing she certainly plays a big game but uh what is your height and her height i think eleni mentioned it but uh i know i'm like five nine almost five nine um i don't know her height specifically um I, I but think... yeah there's yeah, I think Lenny might have said, you know, maybe five one or, or something in that in that area. Yeah. Definitely on the smaller side, but mm -hmm. I'm I'm sure that poses no problem. Her sticks on the ice, and she has a really oh, big yeah. slap shot. So, and she she plays physical as yeah. well. Yeah. Any anything else to say about Boo? Mm, she she plays big. Um, she is an an incredible deep partner to have. Um, so I'm definitely very happy that I get to be her D partner and same with her. She does have, you know, way more experience than I do um, with playing professional hockey. So I definitely learned from her as well. So I'm happy to be with her. Yeah. And you did play for a time with Aaron Ambrose. Has that, has those, have those been your only two partners really, or, or minutes with, with somebody else? Consistently. Yes. Um, but, and what's it what was it like playing with with Aaron at the during the time that you were her partner it was really good because again that was really the beginning of you know the season um and everything like that so i definitely learned quick um cuz she's a talker in a good way <laughs> like she it's all like any question i had she would answer it immediately um you know always getting like little tidbits here and there so I definitely think we learn from each other, but I definitely learned way more from her during that time. So. Yeah, I have heard that she's a talker and she mentioned uh, 
that even with Katie Tabin, uh, who is now her partner, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, maybe she needs to not say everything because, it, you know, the players take it to heart when she does speak. Uh, but that's she's got to be a great veteran presence there as you go into the playoffs as well. And I know you'll be leaning on players like that, Laura Stacey, mm -hmm. uh, Pula and Ambrose. Well, we certainly hope uh, Montreal, you know, has a great playoff run and there will be two series, of course, semifinals, uh, best of five, and then finals also best of five. So good luck with, with those games. I'm sure it's going to be exciting. Uh, let's try just transition real, really quick into uh, your other big interest in life, which is fashion design. I know that's a passion for you and uh, you've worked with or still work with royalty, sports performance, designing fashion and even have your own label. So what's that like and how do you manage both of those worlds? It's awesome and I think it's I always said this when I um even kind of in college or like before college like I have so many interests but I never knew how to kind of combine them all and I definitely think this year was the perfect year to you know combine everything with you know game day outfits and things like that and I really took a liking to it during my gap year of COVID um just kind of picked up my sewing machine and was you know, learning through YouTube on, you know, how to make things. <laughs> and it's it's gotten bigger and bigger now, like learning more and more. Um, so it's been great. And I definitely think with royalty, I really got the sense of, you know, how everything works um, in regards to design and, you know, just, you know, big picture business, clothing business. And with mine, it's really um, just like handmade at the moment. Yeah. Um, just things for myself other people in the league. Um, Very exclusive, we might add, you know. Yeah. <laughs> definitely one of a kind. Yeah. Yeah, definitely one of a kind things right now because I have lots of time, but not a lot of time, so. Yeah, is that your main, uh, you know, hobby and, and excitement in your downtime, so to speak? You know, it, it seems like it would be a good match to getting off the ice and a lot of noise and, and you know, activity and just then just kind of getting into your sewing machine as you said yeah it's it's very nice i <laughs> get back a lot of days and you know either throw on a podcast or a tv show that i'm watching and just kind of sit at my sewing machine or you know cut fabric and things like that so it's really fun and it's definitely a little oasis getaway for me yeah awesome i i, I really love that i uh, love that uh and is there a favorite outfit well I'll put some images on the screen if people are watching, hopefully on, on YouTube or Spotify, if they turn on the video, because some of the outfits are, I mean, they're all so unique. They're quite different. It's not like, I mean, I think there, maybe you have a style, but you know, there hasn't been sort of a, oh, that's a signature, you know, Mariah or Raya, the label design. Mm -hmm. Is there a favorite that you've done or, you know, anything with a special story behind it? I definitely think, in just in regards to like Montreal, I didn't make the blazer pant, but I just customized it <laughs> at our home opener. I think that was one of my favorite ones um, to do. And then I did that for the Ottawa girls as well. So it's, it was really cool that, you know, someone else really liked my design and they wanted to wear them as well. Um, but I think my favorite out of them all was my Bell Center one, uh -huh. um, the <laughs> denim. It was a really proud moment for me because normally I just, I make a piece of an outfit and wear it, but this one was completely head to toe, everything that I made. Um, so it was really, really fun and getting to, you know, walk in and something that you made from head to toe is super special. Yeah, that was, that was a good one. And are they all hanging somewhere in, in protective? Yeah, I have them all hung up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, those will be, those are collector's items. I hope you <laughs> can hang on to those maybe until such time as someone wants to, you know, give you a million dollars or something. But exactly. those, yeah, this is the, you know, the original, so many uh, beginnings for you. You know, you can say this was the first, the first year of it. Uh, Rye the label is what, what your line is called, correct? And folks can find that online. Let's do a little plug for, you know, where they might want to look that up and, and see everything you've done or, or your socials for that. 
Yeah, um, I'm just getting started with it all, but it's just at Raya the Label, just on Instagram for now. Um, but I do post all the things that I've been making, um, you know, outfit, inspo, things like that all on there. Yeah, nice. We'll definitely check that out. Okay, uh, so I'm going to move to a segment and, you know, this also is the first year of this podcast, so things are still, you know, in development as they are with with everything that the, the PWHL has done. So I have a segment I call six in six. Uh, it's roughly six topics or in six minutes and it's rough. I do have six things written down and uh, I have a little jingle that maybe we'll hear. It's six in <laughs> six. And um, they're not going to be too difficult. So um, hopefully it won't it won't scare you. Are you are you up for for doing our six and six? Yeah. Sure. Good. All right. So first one is uh, your favorite player growing up. Um, my favorite player growing up was Megan Duggan. Oh, interesting. Is there a reason? I mean, here I, I yeah, I just I grew a liking to her um, again, like her leadership was just astounding. So um, being able to, you know, kind of like look up to her growing up and seeing all that she could do was really amazing. Yeah, yeah. She was a force. That's is a force for sure. Uh, and I think we might already know the answer to this, but I'll just in case I had this written down already. Funniest teammate. <laughs> oh, there's so many, but I'm definitely going to give it to Boo just because okay. just yesterday she was making a bunch of jokes in the bus and everyone starts laughing. Oh, gosh. Okay. I'd love to hear that. Okay. Uh, do you remember and can you describe the first goal you ever scored in heights, ice hockey, not, you know, just at home in the basement? <laughs> I, I don't remember the first time I ever scored a goal. Do you remember yeah. any, do you remember any early goals or you know was there a league that you played in where you were like the best player on the ice and people were saying we need to get this girl off our off our team into a higher level cuz she's killing us or anything like that Um I the only thing I like really remember about being younger is when I would play boys hockey um and you know there was always things of oh there's there's one girl on the team there's one girl on the team um so that's really all I remember and then I just remember um someone coming up to me and my parents after a game and being like you should switch to girls hockey you know here's this this and this person of contact and that's you know when we kind of started to get into it and move um, closer to Minnesota at that point so right right those were the only things I can really remember from being young but yeah and were you always a sorry this is a a bonus question but did you always play defense i did my brother's a goalie uh, and still plays so i just kind of got into that position and never never stopped yeah you want to help out the goalie that's mm -hmm. that what a nice sister okay um uh, moving rapidly uh <laughs> do you have or if you were called for a shootout or if you have a breakaway do you have a go-to move um, I don't, but Biz and I always joke that we always go five hole. So that's what I'll say. Five hole. Yep. In practice. Like uh backhand kind of slip it, you know, forehand, backhand. Yeah. We just, we just try to slip it, slip it where we can. Just, yeah. Yeah. Get the goalie. Goalies hate <laughs> that one, you know, so that's <laughs> pick the one that the goalies hate the most. Okay. And then finally, if you win the inaugural Walter cup and have a day with the cup, I, you know, I'm guessing they might do that. Uh, what would you do with it? Oh, I think the first thing I would do is um, probably bring it to the lake with all my family. Um, I think that's the first thing I would do personally if I got to bring it home is bring it to the lake. Personally. And that you'll be in Wisconsin is still home for you. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that, you know, that's, that's where every, all your family members would be. So that's, mm -hmm. and then, you know, would there be floating the cup or, you know, drinking from the cup or just taking pictures? Mostly, I think mostly barbecues and taking pictures with the cup is what ends yeah. up happening. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. 
That yeah. sounds great. Could you, yeah, could you imagine, you know, you might as well start visualizing it now. It's, uh, yeah, gotta. yeah it's right around the corner. Uh, well, we are going to let you go. I know you have, you know, practices to get to and uh, playoff games to prepare for. So best of luck to you and the entire team. Really thank you for your time today, Mariah. And uh, yeah, just thank you for joining the Puck Drop podcast. Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. Bye for now. So that was our interview with Mariah Keppel. We really enjoyed it. And, you know, she really gave us some interesting insight. And she's someone to watch, obviously, in this Boston-Montreal series. Uh, Montreal's defense has to step up. Uh, I won't say it's a weak spot because they have Aaron Ambrose, of course. But uh, they've had some injuries. And that pairing of Keppel and Boulier is going to be counted on to play a major role. So we're looking forward to that. I'm going to wrap up this episode and we'll move on to some playoff analysis and sharing some of what the players and coaches said in a bonus episode. So thanks again for watching whatever platform you're watching on. I really appreciate you following and check out Twitter, get some tickets, enjoy the playoff hockey. And thank you again. Bye for now. PWHL Pot Drop Podcast.